Well, this is my eight month Bear Hawk build update. So one month ago, at the end of seven months, I was trying to find a way to mock up the firewall and I did that. I actually uh, used plywood. I mounted all the uh, accessories to the plywood firewall and uh, worked out how I was going to move forward with that. I'd also, at that point, I just finished uncrating the engine. I was starting to learn more about the engine. And you can now see I've installed the engine and I've spent the last four weeks largely working on the engine and the cowlings and a number of other bits and pieces. Uh, come and take a look. So here's the uh, Lycoming IO540 engine uh, in position on the firewall. It's permanently mounted here. And you can see that I've only got the rear engine baffles in place at the moment. I do have all the other baffles made up. They're largely trimmed. There's a little bit more trimming to do. Um, at the moment, I've just been deliberating with uh, whether or not I can remove these rear baffles to do the trimming on the bench. Um, that's a work in progress, but mostly I've made all of them up. They all fit. So what I've done here with the nose bolt was uh, followed all the instructions after trying it several other ways, which none of which worked. Um, the instructions did actually work surprisingly. <laughs> If somewhat long-winded and the, the problem is that uh, so I've got the Hartzell three-bladed prop here It's upside down. I'm not going to flip it up the right way. You can see it sitting there I've actually got it all supported in the cardboard that it came with just to protect it But the bolts there's six bolts that uh, bolt it into place and they've got um, the way those bolts are installed is quite clever actually because should one come loose it can't go anywhere um, the way the hubs designed The flip side to that is they take a long long time to do up probably 30 or 40 minutes to do up six bolts each time you install it. Anyway, what I did was I put the put the prop on into place and I measured the gap between the uh, crankshaft flange and the prop spinner, uh, which was exactly 23 millimeters. No idea, well, that's almost an inch, I think. I think an inch is 24 and a half if you're in North America. What I did um, to get the, the correct place to drill the uh, holes for those bolts and also the shape of the front the circular shape and the correct size i took the flywheel off and i used used that as a template and it worked out really really well because that's the exact size so um, that, that's how i did that once i put that up into place it's locked there solid i did actually put a spirit level across here so i made sure that um, i checked several places on the aircraft to make sure it's sitting level and it is um, within one degree and in fact the easiest way to do that is use your mobile phone um, with a inclinometer on it you just download the app for free brilliant checked it out against the spirit level and it's spot on so here it is with the top cowling in place um, i'm very very happy actually with how it's turned out i managed to get quite a consistent uh, gap around the, the prop spinner there um, i've made up these uh, engine access doors at the moment everything's just clico together but they're all working very very well I've got sufficient access um, once the baffles are in place. It is actually quite tight, but I think it'll be sufficient to remove spark plugs should that be necessary. And just enough access for the bottom row of plugs as well. Um, once the oil filter is in place, I'll be able to access that. I'm hoping that I'll be able to actually remove and install the oil filter without taking off the top cowling. I'm not sure if that's just wishful thinking, but I'm gonna work on it and I can get a good view of everything inside there. And I'll just show you down inside here, down the bottom here, I've got the vertical power, primary power supply, and uh, that's, that's got quite a lot of room around it to work, so it's easy to access. I've got the Grove uh, hydraulic reservoir sitting up here, and in here is the EarthX battery box. All of them very easy to access, and uh, the, the battery has got plenty of room so that I can remove it uh, through the top cowling there. But the issue when, you, when you're trying to find the correct placement for all these parts, you move one part just by a small amount and it changes five other things. So the oil cooler sitting there does work quite well. It leaves me plenty of room up here. Yesterday, I got a delivery from Aircraft Spruce in the States and, and that's my oil filter, the remote oil filter mounting bracket, which is gonna go somewhere up in here. And, and I'm left with a ton of space to choose where to put that. Now, one issue I have had is with the Vitamin exhaust. They, um, they were delivered in the container when the aircraft came out last um, July. Now, they all bolted on very well. I had a number of comments from friends about how well made they were, and they were. They were beautifully made. They bolted into place very, very quickly, very easily. Everything worked as advertised. Right up to the point that I fit the lower engine cowling, and we, we have had um, a, a bit of a clash with uh, the pipes number one and number six touching the cowling, number six in particular, more than just touching it. Um, it made it quite difficult to get into place. And we're, we're a little bit um, baffled, to be honest, 
um, both the manufacturer, Clint, and myself and, uh, and a few others who have had the same issue as to why it's occurring on some aircraft and not others. Anyway, um, Clint has stood by his product. Yesterday I boxed it up and couriered it back to him. He's going to tighten everything up. He's done this a few times before with, with other exhausts that he's made for the Bearhawk. And hopefully I should have it back in three weeks or so. And uh, all going well, it should clear those cowlings nicely. So I've made progress in a couple of other areas. Around the seven month mark, I had uh, just finished mocking up the instrument panel. And uh, what we did is we print, uh, printed off a file and we took the file into uh, a place downtown Christchurch in the industrial area that were able to cut um, with using a water jet, they cut this one out of aluminium. It's come out very, very well, very happy with it. I've removed the screens, the Dynon screens, just so they don't get scratched, but the, the panel is now mounted permanently in place. It's actually hinged at the bottom, so when I undo these screws, it folds forward um, as, as much as you want, actually. It's probably, uh, it, it can go all the way down. Now, I'll, I'm probably only going to use that facility for it to, to pivot forward while we do the wiring in the back. Um, and after that, it'll essentially be um, vertically in place and fixed. In the last couple of days, I got the uh, control stick grips mounted into place. I did have a couple of issues uh, getting them into place. The main one being that these little bushings that actually sit in the top of the tube, um, I didn't realize, I must have ordered uh, one size too large. So, and I didn't have a lathe to turn them down. So what I did is I put them in the drill press over there. I, I, I shoved a bolt through the middle, put some tape on, held them in the drill press. And it, it took me about an hour to turn them down with a file, but I got them down to the right size and they bolted in there quite nicely. Um, there's actually a tiny little bit of clearance up here, but um, I've done that deliberately because on these ones, there's no need to, to have fingers on the top other than these, these buttons here, which actually I'm not gonna use, but there's a push to torque on the front and another button tucked in the, in the bottom down there so very very happy with how they've turned out. Now you can also see uh, down here th these are the warm air cabin heat boxes so they're, they're mounted on the forward side of the firewall I've uh, drilled holes and uh, they're going to have individual selectors one one for the left side one for the right side and if I zoom in on the forward side of the firewall you can see the cabin heat boxes just sitting down there they've got scat tubes attached to them and those scat tubes run back to the heat muffs here you can't actually see where the scat tubes attached they're, they're on the other side of the heat muff but essentially what happens is you is, is you duct air off the rear baffle here um, the other side comes off the forward baffle it goes down to the heat muff warms the air up and then into the heat box Last month I just got the Bearhawk up on its gear legs again for the final time, or so I thought, but I had forgotten to put these uh, plastic gear fairings, the aerodynamic gear fairings in place. Um, I turned out I'd also forgotten to put the rubber seals on as well. So I'm getting quite good at lifting and uh, removing those, those shock struts now. I can do it in about five minutes by myself. I've figured it all out. So it's actually quite easy once you know how to do it. So I took the seats into the upholsterer about a month ago and uh, that was after cutting some foam, making a mock-up, I sat in them and read my Kindle for an hour and made sure that they were pretty comfortable. I ended up um, fabricating some wedges out of the foam material to put under, under my thighs and it really spread the load quite well. The goal there was to keep the rear part of of the seat where your sit bones effectively make the most contact. I wanted to keep that down um, as low here as I could. And the reason for that was to keep my eyes down below the wing so that my head and eyes were not up in the wing route. And I think we've managed to achieve that. I dropped by the upholsterers yesterday. They have finished making the uh, two front seats. So I'm very, very happy with them. Um, they've been beautifully made. Got um, it's, it's almost like a charcoal color vinyl with black stitching and orange stitching around the outside. So very happy with those. And uh, next week they assure me that the rear seat will be made and finished also. Now in the last update, I had already installed the avionics and you can see them uh, up inside here. I, I built a couple of avionics racks. We've now put the instrument panel in place, uh, which is probably permanently done. It does still have some finishing detail to be done on it. I've got to put the graphics on it, things like that, and install the screens, and they'll go and last. The wiring, I'm not sure when I'm going to do that. It might be in the next month or so, or maybe a little bit later, but here's the thing. The wiring looms are already made up um, by Dynon, um, actually by Advanced Flight Systems in the States. Very, very professional job that they've done. So when I come to wire this up, 90% of it will be done within about 15 minutes. Most of the work is in securing the wiring looms with cable ties and, and um, what have you. So I am planning though to get some professional help because I still have to wire up um, the EMAGs 
um, to the ignition switches, the starter switch and the battery and that kind of thing. Some of it I will do myself, but I'm going to try and avoid having uh, wiring gremlins in the air and I might enlist some professional help and get someone to come out and give me a hand here in the shed. So I deliberated for quite some time about where to place the aircraft battery and I was considering putting it in the cabin under uh, the right front uh, passenger seat actually. Um, and still I, I do think that is quite a good place to have it. But in the end I've decided um, for this bear hawk to put it on the firewall and um, there it is. You can see it there. Now one advantage there is that you've got fairly short runs from the battery to the starter motor and from the alternator back to the battery. So that's why I've gone with it in there. Um, I'm intending to put a, an air blast tube and run it off the, uh, one of the top baffles here just, just to provide some cooling air. There's also going to be a couple of blast tubes onto the EMAGs as well, just to keep them cool. It does get fairly warm under the cowl and uh, you know, obviously the warmest uh, that it gets tends to be just after you shut the engine down because there's no more airflow coming through the cowling. Now there was an interesting uh, decision making process here. I've ended up with the oil cooler and you can see uh, it's just tucked down here at the end of that uh, orange scat tube. Now originally when I did the mock-up on the plywood firewall, I had the oil cooler on the other side. Now here's the thing, I wish I'd left it on the other side. The reason it ended up over here was because I bought the firewall forward kit off Vans Aircraft. The firewall forward kit from Vans is exceptional. It's very, very well manufactured, well designed. One of the features of it is that it has this round flange here that draws air off the number five cylinder down through the scat tube. Now I've got the scat tube, but it's not connected at the moment, obviously. And it feeds down to the oil cooler. And I, I'm guessing that on those Vans aircraft, they have the oil cooler on the left-hand side, exactly where mine is. Um, and that's fine, it probably works well on a Vans aircraft. It doesn't work quite so well on the Bearhawk. I, I, probably I should have stuck to my guns and just left the oil cooler on the other side. The reason being, there's a, a bit more room there because the, the uh, number five cylinder um, is further forward than the number six. So you've got more room to play around with. Also, the fuel pump doesn't interfere with it. So what I've done, you know, essentially is I've got the oil cooler on this side and I've got the battery and uh, the contactors, uh, you know, the battery management panel on the other side. Probably would have been better just to do it the way I'd planned initially. And that, that was one small regret. It's, it's not really a, a massive game changer. It's not a train smash. It, it's going to work fine the way it is. Um, yeah, so one of the interesting things with the uh, design and, you know, probably it's very obvious to most people, but the, the air comes in through the front intakes on top of the cylinders and creates a high pressure area up here. I've got some of the baffles removed currently, but once they're all in place, there's going to be rubber seals up here that seals against this top cowling. That creates a high pressure area up the top, and ideally what you want is a low pressure area down below, down here. We're going to test that out once I uh, start the test flying. If you're not achieving that, then you're not going to get very good cooling. So one of the, one, what I think is an advantage is having the oil cooler down there, and largely why I put it so low down is that it's very close to the outlet and it should draw that warm air through the oil cooler and discharge it straight overboard into the low pressure area. Now, so that's where I am at the end of eight months. It's been a fairly solid eight months, although it did take a few days out earlier this month. I went hiking up into the mountains, had a fantastic time, but it, you know, most days I'm getting two, three, four hours done on the Bearhawk, thoroughly enjoying it, so I, I can't imagine not building this plane at the moment. Um, yeah, it's, it's been great. So in the, just looking back on the last month, where, four weeks ago, I, I had a slightly different idea in mind of where I was gonna proceed and how I was gonna proceed. I had an idea that I might mount the engine, but I was seeing quite a few other things that I would need to do first. What actually happened is once I started building those baffles, started doing the firewall itself and mounting gear on the firewall, it became obvious quite quickly that the next logical step was to get the engine on. And, and so that's, I, ju I just went with the flow with that, got the engine on, and then it became very apparent a week later that I needed to get the nose bowl on. And then I thought, well, I might as well just keep going. And so I built the cows. Now it's very obvious that I need to do the nut plates to secure the cows. And so it's just a, a sort of natural workflow. Um, one thing I did have to do was, turned out I'd um, actually forgotten to put some aluminium braces up in, inside the instrument panel in the boot cowl. So I went back last week and did those. But the progress is going really well. Um, yeah, where to next? I'm not too sure. There is some obvious flow, you know, if I just follow that flow and keep going, I think that's going to lead me through the project quite well. Um, I, I would like to keep proceeding with the engine, get the cowling finished, get all the, cow, the cam locks installed, the nut plates installed, and then there's quite a lot of engine wiring. 
Um, that to me seems fairly logical. I've got most of it inside uh, ready to go. There's uh, probably a few days for each uh, section of that wiring. Um, I've got cylinder head temperature probes, uh, EGT probes, etc., etc., and running wires through the firewall. At the moment, I feel a little bit apprehensive about making those holes through the firewall, but I'll get over that mental block and just proceed with it. I'm probably then going to proceed with wiring the avionics, as I just mentioned. That to me is fairly straightforward. Um, most of the work there is in securing the, the wiring looms that are already made up. And I think from then, what what I'm going to do, the next logical step, will be to start at the back of the aircraft and work my way forward, finishing everything. Now, I've got a couple of panels that need to be made up. Um, well, I've actually made the panels. I, I haven't attached the nut plates and I haven't split them yet. There's no hurry to do that, but at some point I need to start at the back and start working forward and cataloguing each nut and bolt and tightening them up permanently, marking them, and then I think that will become, it'll make things obvious that need to be finished that I have to then focus my attention on. So there you go, that's the end of eight months work on the Beerhawk aircraft. I'm still thoroughly enjoying it and I'll do an update in another four weeks.